The South Pine Fire burning now up more than 200 acres in the Okanagan County area. What this means now for residents living nearby. Plus, more potential bad news for Washingtonians struggling financially during the pandemic. The statewide moratorium on evictions is quickly coming to an end. Experts weigh in on what they're concerned about. We got our first taste of true summer heat this week, but now next week expecting things to be even hotter yet. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Krem 2 News at 11. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Welcome everyone, I'm Regina On. We want to start off tonight with that developing wildfire in Okanagan County. As of tonight, all evacuations have been canceled for the South Pine Fire near the town of Tenasket. The fire has burned 240 acres and crews will be working overnight to contain that fire. And according to Okanagan County Emergency Man Management, the fire may have been man-made, but it's still under investigation. Previously, level two evacuations were in place for the 269 Haggard Road area. And when the fire first started, there were unauthorized aircraft in the area that delayed fire crews for about 20 minutes. Now this is still a developing story and we'll be sure to update you as we get more information. Turning to weather now, it's definitely hot out there and even warm up till now. Meteorologist Thomas Patrick out on the Outdoor Weather Center for us. So Thomas, with this heat, we definitely have to be cautious as we are in fire season right yeah, now. Yeah, as always, and especially in the summertime anyways, because let's face it, it's almost going to be in the 90s every single day in central Washington. And it's also an area that still is reporting moderate to severe drought conditions. So as we zoom in and try to look at some of the current conditions, focusing on the winds, which is the most important part of of any kind of wildfire forecasting. We're seeing the winds at about 8 to 15 miles per hour between OMAC and Tenasket near where that fire is burning as of this hour. So we will keep tabs on that in the coming days as well. Just realize that the Okanagan Valley can oftentimes funnel the winds, make them a little bit faster than the surrounding area, but nothing extreme in terms of winds, at least not regionally across our area for a few days to come. But plenty hot temperatures still in the 90s all across Washington. The only triple digit reading was down in the Tri-Cities for today. Today. That heat does ease off for just a little bit for tomorrow. Just looking for highs in the mid 80s. There is a chance for some thunderstorms in North Idaho come tomorrow morning. It is a very small chance. Nonetheless, I'll show you in detail what our computer modeling has to say about that. But once we get in the afternoon, definitely a dry day for the region. Look at Sunday. It's going to be back into the 90s, but it doesn't just stop there. I'll show you just how close Spokane may get to 100 degrees next week. That part of the forecast is all in just a few minutes. It sounds good, Thomas. Thanks so much. Now to coronavirus headlines. Spokane Regional Health District reporting 74 new coronavirus cases today. That brings the total number of cases in Spokane County to 2,961. 31 county residents are currently hospitalized. Dr. Bob Lutz says Spokane County hasn't even hit the peak yet. <laughs> Do I think we've hit the peak? No, no, unfortunately not. Um, you know, and uh, if I were, if 100% of people today were to follow all the guidance, i.e. Uh, physically distance, face coverings when in public, uh, staying home when you're ill, to include staying home from work, it would take us at our current trajectory four to six weeks to really see a significant impact in our cases. Now, 29% of coronavirus cases are younger people between the ages of 20 to 29. He says as we see case numbers in young people increase, eventually we'll see cases hit individuals who are at a higher risk for hospitalization. And some good news, too, coming today from Dr. Lutz. He says based off recent local findings, 93% of people were wearing face coverings while going into retail stores. And more states are now issuing mandatory face mask mandates. Those states are there in blue. Most West and East Coast states require face masks, including right here in Washington. And as of now, Idaho does not have a statewide mandate. The Panhandle Health District reporting 46 new coronavirus cases today. That brings our total cases to 1,346. And no new deaths have been reported. Currently, 22 people are hospitalized. And Kootenai Health responding to the uptick in coronavirus cases in North Idaho with more resources. Kootenai Health has designated one medical unit as its coronavirus unit, where all patients with coronavirus will be cared for. They are also adding more beds to their critical care units, so those who need cardiac care, trauma care, as well as severely ill coronavirus patients will be cared for there. Additional critical care nurses have been brought on to have enough staff to care for all of those hospital patients.
For those struggling financially during the pandemic, there may be some more bad news ahead in Washington. The statewide moratorium on evictions is set to expire end of day August 1st. That means unless the governor renews his order, many people could find themselves forced from their homes. Political reporter Casey Decker spoke with the local tenants advocate about how dire the situation might be. I am extremely concerned. It's it's really consuming everything that I'm doing. I'm very worried. Terry Anderson and the Tenants Union are gearing up for a potential wave of evictions in just a few weeks. Amidst a public health and economic emergency, Governor Jay Inslee ordered nearly all evictions be stopped back in March. The order also banned late fees and made it so landlords have to offer reasonable repayment plans for missed rent checks. They can't demand it all back in a lump some when the order expires. So far, Anderson says the policy has worked, keeping people who have taken a financial hit in their homes. I think for the most part, it's been very successful. I think the attorney general has been very diligent in accepting the complaints. Inslee extended the moratorium twice. The current one is set to expire at 11.59 p.m. August 1st. The city of Spokane briefly had its own moratorium in the spring, but leaders let that expire once the state one was enacted. And for those in federally backed housing, there were national protections as well, but those two expire at the end of the week. So all this month, tenants have been calling, concerned about what will happen if they still can't come up with the money. Landlords have indicated that they will be uh, in, uh, evicting them in August. Anderson says landlords are mostly sticking to the rules and offering payment plans for missed rent. But she's not confident all of them are duly reasonable. I, I'm worried that there, these plans are a setup that tenants are going to fail and um, then be subject to eviction. That could lead to thousands of people kicked out of their homes at a time when jobs are scarce and coronavirus case numbers are through the roof. It, it is no longer just a, a protection to keep people housed. It's also a public health issue. The governor still hasn't made a decision on extending the order, and it's also possible city council could step in. But regardless of those outcomes, there's another plan being pursued as well. Well, we've actually joined forces with the uh, Landlord Association in Spokane to ask Spokane County to use its CARES Act funding to pay for rental assistance. Some local governments have already indicated they will be offering rental assistance, though whether or not it'll be enough remains to be seen. In Spokane, Casey Decker, Kremt News. Here's some more of your top stories from tonight. A Coeur d'Alene formal now canceled amid coronavirus concerns from the public. We first brought you the story on Monday. A local group from Spokane was planning to prom across the border in Idaho instead of canceling the event in Spokane. The event was expected to host 150 people. The organizer said given the circumstances, it was best to cancel it at this time. He also stressed the event was privately sponsored and was not affiliated with any school or organization. People who have already paid for the event should be receiving refunds. The man accused of running over two protesters on I-5 in Seattle appeared in court this morning. Dewitt Kaleti pleaded not guilty to charges of vehicular homicide, vehicular assault, and reckless driving. His bail has been set at $1.2 million. He drove through a road closure three and a half weeks ago and hit 24-year-old Summer Taylor and 32-year-old Diaz Love. They were both part of a Black Lives Matter protest. Taylor died and Love is still recovering in the hospital. Kootenai County has started a new campaign aimed at stopping the spread of coronavirus in North Idaho. The Wear a Mask campaign is hoping to remind both residents and visitors to wear masks to stop the spread of COVID-19. They'll be handing out these signs and creating billboards that say, Stop the spread, wear a mask in Kootenai County. There have been ongoing conversations between community leaders about a potential mask mandate. The white elephant may be closed, but their iconic mascot will have a new home in Riverfront Park. The white elephant named Isidore will be at the Loof Carousel building. The two attractions are reunited after decades apart. Both were originally fixtures of the Natatorium Park, Spokane's amusement park attraction founded at the turn of the 20th century. It's kind of cool. All right, school districts hard at work to reimagine what school will look like for your kids in the fall. Coming up, we'll break down what's being considered. Stay with us. We're back after a quick break.